So hi guys, my name is Mansi Anand and welcome to RBI two four seven. So guys, wishing you a very happy Diwali and I hope that you all continue your studies and enjoy a lot in the upcoming festive season, right? So today uh, we are going to take a special topic, right? Uh, we are not going to discuss questions, but we are going to discuss a topic which has recently been in news. So uh, it's more like a story. So there are very less concepts involved, but it's more like a story, and I hope you enjoy it and find it beneficial, right? So uh, before starting with the topic. I would like to ask you to subscribe to our channel. So, if you are new here, then do not forget to subscribe to our channel and do not forget to press this bell icon, which is flashing on the screen. It can help you to get notified whenever a new video comes up. And after that, you can also join our Telegram group. In this group, you can post all your doubts and queries, and we'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Right? So, okay. The topic for today is what happened to Ant's IQ. Right, so I think uh, most of you would be knowing about it that Ant Financials, which was going to be uh, the largest IPO in the world, but now it has been halted, and by none other than by none other than their own country's regulators. Right, so here we are going to discuss a little story about Ant and the formation, and now what is happening to it. Right, okay. So let's start with the beginning introduction. What are we going to discuss? So IPO, which was supposed to be the biggest IPO, world's largest IPO, it has been halted at the last minute. And Chinese financial company, Ant Group, Ant Financial, a very famous company, very famous financial company, it was set to go public on November five. So IPO was expected to raise an estimated of about thirty-seven billion, which was going to boost Ant's market value in excess of three hundred billion, right? So you can imagine the size of the company and the massive amount it was going to raise from the public, right? But regulators for the Shanghai Stock Exchange, so it was going to be uh, launched on Shanghai and Hong Kong Stock Exchange, where Ant was planning to list abruptly sub uh, suspended the offering, citing major issues with the group that may fail. So basically, they didn't give any specific reason, but they just said that. Uh, that the the company is failing on some disclosure norms. They are not telling the vital information, and that is why we are halting it. But uh, I think there's a twist in story, and some more reasons are being given for it. Right? Hong Kong's stock exchange, where Ant was planning to do a dual listing, soon followed the halting uh, in halting the IPO. Obviously, this was expected. If one stock exchange and uh, really big as Shanghai Stock Exchange halted it, then it was expected that Hong Kong was not going to continue it, right? So now let us get on to some uh, past uh, memories of Ant Financial and its creation, right? Okay, here you can see Jack Ma. A little about the founder, Jack Ma. I think we all are aware of this personality, uh, the richest man in China. And one of the richest in the world, so Jack Ma, I think, needs no introduction. So, as you know, that he was born in a very humble family, and I think one thing that that really makes him an inspiration for many people is that he has faced so many failures in his life before coming up with a successful idea, before coming up with a successful company, right? So, I think this this uh, according to me personally, this failure aspect, which is associated with Jack Ma, makes him more relatable. Then many other entrepreneurs who who are uh, geniuses or who are really smart in their own fields, so uh, that gives inspiration to a common man who usually faces failure on a daily life to not to give up and continue striving. Right? So Jack Ma, coming from very humble family, born on October fifteen, nineteen sixty four, in southern in southeast part of China, grew up in communist China, failed his college. Rejected from a dozen of jobs, including one at KFC, and there's also a story that he applied at Harvard ten times, but he was not selected. Then he applied at many uh, job positions where he was rejected. I think there is a story about him that says that uh, there, uh, he went to an interview where twenty eight, twenty nine people were there, and everyone else was ex uh, selected except him. So I really don't know the credit worthiness of the story, but uh, but I think. Uh, nothing better to get motivation from. You can derive motivation from anywhere, right? So 
he had no experience and this this thing makes the, uh, his journey so special that he had no experience with computers or coding many entrepreneurs they themselves like if we see mark zuckerberg he himself is a tech expert and then he owns one of the major um, social media companies in the world right so but jack ma he had nothing to do with computers or coding or internet but he was captivated by internet so he went on a us trip and where he first time saw internet and he was so uh, motivated by he was so captivated by it so fascinated by it that he wanted to establish an internet company for china right okay this inspired him to found an internet company for china through though, though his first two ventures failed badly but four years later he came up with a new company called alibaba with many of his friends and after that the site followed the exporters to post product listings that allowed customers that customers could buy it directly so basically jack ma came up with a company called alibaba where so this company it it acted as a platform where where customers can re, can match up with the sellers right so the beginning right so the inspiration coming from us and then uh, jack ma founding alibaba right okay after that the beginning of the story see in 2003 jack ma he he came up with a platform online marketplace called taobao see the problem with this marketplace what okay this was a platform which provided uh, which provided a place where sellers and buyers could deal with each other but the problem the problem with this was that there was lack of trust lack of trust in what sense that buyers they directly had to pay to the seller rather than going through this platform or rather than taobao taking responsibility for it um they they directly had to pay to the seller from whom they were purchasing and they were at, and they had to meet the seller uh, outside somewhere and then take the product from them so the, all these things made some dealings very fishy and uh, people were not willing to trust this platform so easily they were not willing to buy things from it so easily because they found these things too sketchy because the, there was no credibility right so this was a problematic point that jack ma needed to uh that the company basically they, they needed to find a solution for that so taobao first launched user activity high but there were very few transactions problem was lack of trust between buyers and sellers which was a huge transactional barriers right so to solve this they came up with a solution called custodial transactions and they call that solution alipay now what they did was they came up with alipay now what is what did this alipay do it was basically meant to be custodial transactions custodial transactions means they allowed their customers so the customers who used to buy on this platform they allowed the customers to put their money into an account which was handled by this marketplace and then they are ensuring that the product had reached, uh, reached the buyer safely and in good condition they transferred that money to the seller so basically they took on that role for establishing trust so they they, they became the intermediary between buyers and sellers and they took the responsibility upon themselves so that uh, so that their uh, customers their clients can have trust on them right so they called this custodial transactions because the company was the custodian of the money they were custodian of the trust that has to be established between the buyer and the sellers right and they called it ali pay moving ahead okay okay so the employees of ali baba were burdened with handling so many accounts so see obviously this platform this this ali pay uh, they it, it led to establishment of trust but there were errors also because they had to carry so many transactions so employees of alibaba were really burdened by handling so many accounts and then looking after okay this transaction has happened we have to transfer this into customer into the seller's account so there was actually too much burden on them which led to many mistakes and obviously if you are in such 
uh, a business like e-commerce you cannot afford to uh, you cannot afford to uh, uh, pro problemize your customers in any ways or you cannot afford to let your customers be in problem for a long time right so they had to find a solution for it for the errors that they were making for that they thought let us do one thing right let us contact with banks let us try to connect them and form a network so that banks can handle all these things and we will be free to serve our customers right so this sparked alibaba's collaboration with chinese banks to build infrastructure for bridging online payments with online banking now online payments which were happening on their platform they bridged it with online banking by getting into contact with banks right so bank that taobao partnered with was for custodial transaction was commercial bank of china right so commercial bank of china they partnered with after that when commercial bank of china um, started working with taobao after that it, uh, it led like to it led it led to ease of transactions and after that eventually many major banks of china they jo like merchant bank and china construction bank they joined the network so in this way they try to form a network of banks so that banks can handle the banking part and they were free to uh, to to think of new ways that how to provide more utility to their customers right so by 2010 alipay had established connections with hundreds of banks you can see 200 plus banks in china another key feature which was facilitating was a uh, quick payment checkout right so say uh, saving the details of customers so that they do, did not uh, they did not have to enter details every time basically quick payments so currently we do this uh, on our favorite shopping websites we tend to um, store our details or we tend to save our details so that we can make easy checkout although the trust which is placed on these type of uh, information sharing is doubtful but still we do it because of the ease of transaction ease is very important so quick payments right so uh, when they combined online payments with online banking it led to uh, it led to faster transactions right so all this worked well for taobao after that uh, all this worked well for alipay and then how did it come to the creation of and financials Here you can see that Taobao users expressed interest in keeping their balances balances stored on platform since they might use them to purchases again. As I just told you that they save their details on the platform and they had no problem doing that. Basically, this proved that there were possibility of virtual accounts. Basically, they could uh, this this gave them the this gave them the idea that they could create. wallets they could create virtual wallets online wallets where customers could keep their money and transact very easily right so this part the possibility of virtual account and this rapidly going division so this financial division was spun off into a separate entity spun off means spin off usually spin off it means when a company breaks down or a uh, separate a part of it into another company let's say there is a company and they think one of their department is too big to handle that is why they they uh, they create it into another company right so the financial division was spun off was spun off as a separate entity and today we know it as ant financial or ant group right and this company is massive right now okay so this was story behind the establishment now coming to the ipo okay so you can see here that ant made huge revenues right so i'm not going to um, read this you can save this and read this if you want so in short uh, they they were making huge revenues and they were making huge profits they are doing very good they were doing very well and that is why it, they thought that it was the perfect time to cash on it or by bringing an ipo right so and financial put up 10% of the company for sale in a bid to raise 34.5 billion from the public everybody thought that ipo was going to be the largest public offering ever and indeed it was so 
largest public offering ever and the response that this ipo got was also uh, amazing the, the, the ipo was subs over subscribed many times so it re it re it received bumper response here you can see just a second okay here you can see some of the largest ipos of the world here is the ant group with 34.5 billion saudi aramco aramco we know such a huge giant oil company after that alibaba softbank agriculture bank of china you can see many of them but see here ant group with such a huge amount to raise from public and it was fully subscribed regulator forced the company to shelve the ipo so but this was not digested by china's regulators and they halted the ipo just two days before it was ready so here you can say that if i see that they foiled the largest stock sale in the global finances as they called a halt on november 5 debut of and financials less than 48 hours before highly anticipated starting of trading so guys if you remember the topics like listing pop you can connect it to it such a huge company those people who were allotted the shares during the ipo they could have they could have made huge gains when the trading started right so <clears throat> but this was not digested by china's regulators and they put restrictions on it after that so before this a meeting happened between and group senior executives and china's top financial regulators which led to this significant change basically no no constructive reason has been given but it has been just told that they are not fulfilling some norms and they need to do more they need to provide some more information only then uh, they could think of giving them uh, an opportunity to come up with an ipo right so chinese regulators particularly see uh, there is one more reason which is being cited is that jack ma he recently criticized china for being too stiff to uh, too rigid in their in their conduct which is not allow, allowing financial innovation into the country so jack ma was recently uh, he was caught stating this and after this so it is being said that it, this is the reason that regulators are trying to show him the place or they are trying to show him that you might be one of the richest man but uh, still you are no one in front of the regulators so this is uh, this, this is what is being written in newspapers but undoubtedly such a huge ipo getting halted just two days before trading is is a massive event and uh, undoubtedly we are going to discuss more reasons as news comes out but currently this is the main part that jack ma regulators they wanted to show him that you uh, to show him that we can do everything in our power to stop you to, or stop your company from expanding so ma, jack ma criticized financial and regulatory ecosystem in china apparently this put him in the crosshairs until and can work with regu regulators it would not be allowed to come up with an ipo right so we'll have to wait to see that what is going to happen in future one more thing which i would like to discuss here is that state owned banks of china they are hugely benefiting from this point because um, and financial such a huge company that to into private hands right so as the as as this news came out of halting of ipo chinese state owned banks they experienced a lot of surge in their share price right here you can see china merchants bank and other state bank lenders emerged as biggest winners from new regulations right so merchants bank which is known as the retail king in china sold 19% in hong kong so here you can see in this chart as well okay so the red line that tells you about alibaba's holding and this tells you about china's the black line tells you about china merchant bank companies last price whereas red one tells you about alibaba's price right see uh, so this was being done in november as the news came out alibaba's shares fell whereas the chinese state bank state owned banks price right uh, they 
so right so these are one entities which are benefiting from this point from this uh, from this event right so guys this is it for today and i hope you found this information beneficial and if you did then do not forget to hit the like button and if there is any news there is any event that you would like me to discuss in the session then you can openly mention them in the on the, uh, in the comments on the video and we'll try to take them up as soon as possible so i'm getting many requests for asian financial crisis so guys do not worry don't worry we are going to take it up in one of the upcoming session and um, if there is any related topic uh, to finance or economics that you would like me to take up then do not hesitate to mention it in the comments right so guys once again a very happy diwali to you and i'll see you in the next session till then you have a happy weekend have a joyful weekend and take care of yourselves do not uh, do not forget to carry on your studies but simultaneously enjoy the festive season because we, we i think we surely needed we deadly needed uh amidst all this we have been suffering from this pandemic so we we actually need this festive season to be very happy and joyful so happy diwali and thank you for being here